So I'm slowly cleaning up all the wood that's still left in the garage. Sawdust sure has a way of getting just about everywhere. And you know what would really hit the spot right now? A Segway. I meant to say an espresso. Problem is, I don't have an espresso maker. Like a mocha pot. So I'm gonna have to make one. That was nice. Good job. Here, let me draw a picture of what I'm talking about. Though I'm sure you probably know exactly what I mean. Basically, something like this. But cooler. Way cooler. And by cooler, I mean cylindrical. Let's have a quick look at the parts and how it's supposed to work. I'll basically be making four pieces. The boiler, where the water goes. The pot at the top, where the coffee collects. Some sort of a lid. And most likely a handle. The other parts I need we'll get into in a minute, but I just bought them. Basically the funnel, the filter, a gasket, and a safety valve. A pressure release, essentially. You put water in the bottom and ground coffee in the funnel. Screw the parts together and pressure on a gasket forms the seal between the two. Then you light her up. As the water heats up and comes to a boil, the water vaporizes and steam builds pressure. That pressure buildup in the sealed boiler pushes down on the hot water. And the only place it can go is up the funnel and through the coffee grounds. That upward pressure compacts the coffee a bit, basically tamping it, which in turn drives pressure up just a little bit higher. Finally, the brewed coffee pushes up through that filter into the center column and spills over into the top chamber, into the coffee pot. I think I can get the whole thing out of this piece of aluminum. This is a little over 3 inches by 6 inches. It's 80 by 150 millimeters. I plan to make a 4 cup mocha pot. You know, there's me, my wife, and my two young children. And I'm hoping I can get all the parts out of here. I think I can definitely get the boiler and the top chamber out of here. I'll split these in two and these are the two parts that thread together. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get a lid out of this and that's why I've got the extra chunk of aluminum back there. I think this will mostly be lathe work. There may be some milling to rough out the chamber at the top. I haven't completely thought this through, but I'm probably going to do some welding to build up basically a spout that the coffee pours out of. And depending how I'm feeling, I may see and see the lid and maybe the handle. Now these are the parts that I purchased. I've got a funnel. This is where the coffee goes. A little pressure relief valve for the boiler section. The filter and a gasket. Now, I did consider making all of these parts, but I opted to buy them for two reasons, mostly. First, these are the kind of parts that aren't very conducive to like a home shop build. This, for example, is a deep drawn aluminum part. I basically have a big thin sheet of aluminum and it goes through a, probably like some kind of a progressive die that stamps and deep draws them and trims them and spits these out by the millions. Second, these things are consumables. So sooner or later, I'd have to throw them away and I guess make new ones if I wanted to keep drinking espresso. So it made sense to just buy them and build the whole thing to standard sizes. First thing I need to do is cut off a piece that will become the boiler. I've already got that marked out. If anybody's got any brilliant ideas on how I should do this, just let me know. Activate the Energon Saw. You know, Optimus, that's probably the first smart thing I've heard you say all day. I'd be hard pressed to give you an explanation, but these sort of thin walled parts have always made me nervous. When all said and done, this thing will have about an eighth of an inch wall thickness all around. And although working to a dimension is working to a dimension, I don't know, for some reason they just spook me. Like I'm always worried I'm gonna end up breaking through the part and scrapping it. The machined features you see on the front are remnants from whatever I cut out of this the last time. But I'm gonna have to bore this out and reduce the diameter at the top so everything should fit here and I get to recoup about an inch of material I might have otherwise lost. Now the first thing I'd like to do here is clean up these cuts from the Energon saw just so I have solid dimensions I can reference when I'm boring down into the part. The bore on what will become this threaded end should be a nice slip fit with the funnel, this filter body. So I'm going to do that size bore almost all the way to depth. Once I have that, that'll remove the bulk of the material 
and I can start to work on the undercut, sort of cut radially to get to my wall thickness. I've used gauge blocks to set a carriage stop here on the bed of my lathe as a bit of an insurance policy to make sure I don't break through the bottom there, don't go too deep. As long as I don't touch the hand wheel on the top slide, this carriage stop should keep me from scrapping the part, at least axially. So I'm within about 5 thou of finished dimension, radially, it's 10 thou on the diameter. Before I take this too far or thin this out too much, I'd like to do some work on the outside. Take this to finished dimension and generally clean it up a bit, and then come back to finish the inside and cut the threads. If I were to finish this side, I wouldn't have that much wall thickness left to really get a good reliable hold to work the other side. I've opted for a 10 TPI thread. That's two and a half millimeter pitch. And really for no particular reason. It seemed to be sort of like the Goldilocks size on this diameter and length that I have. Not too fine, not too coarse. I apologize if they're a little too hard to see. Shiny aluminum is tough to film. And that's the main reason why I don't like to cut perfectly smooth polished thread. One more thing I'd like to do here is get rid of the partial thread. Again, it's probably impossible to see, but if you've cut any threads, or if you've even cut a bolt or a piece of all thread in half, you'll be familiar with the partial thread that you get. So down here, it's just a very sharp wisp. It starts to fully develop as the thread moves into the material until you get to about here-ish, and there's a fully developed thread. What I'd like to do is remove all of the partial thread. Because it's a fine pitch on a large diameter, that ill-formed thread, you know, you can see goes most of the way around. I'm going to use my tool post mounted die grinder. It's got a six millimeter two flute end mill in it to cut what's referred to as a blunt start to the thread. I think this is sometimes called a Higby cut or a Higby thread. I think it's used a lot in like pipe couplings and stuff that's handled often. It makes for a thread that's easier to start and I suppose not as dangerous, prone to cutting. The lathe is still basically set up to cut threads. I'm going to work manually here with the half nut engaged. So I'm going to turn the chuck by hand and that's going to advance the carriage and the die grinder at the same pitch as this thread. And I should be able to mill off essentially this helical path. So hopefully you can see this. All of the partial thread's been milled away, and it starts right there. This is essentially what you see on the end of like a, a garden hose. Anyway, I think that'll work for the thread. All that's left to do on this part is clean up the inside. So you know like when you're sitting in your car, waiting at a stoplight and thinking through all the steps you're gonna to have to go through to make an espresso pot. 
Yeah, I didn't expect this one to be so tedious. The good news is I didn't break through the bottom or the side. Turns out that I don't have the right style boring bar to easily come in and undercut the back side. So I had to do a lot of screwing around with spinning the tool post and rotating the tool. But it's done. I also cut the recess where the funnel fits. It obviously doesn't go that way, but when you flip it, the little flange on the end is almost flush with the top. The only thing this is missing now is a drilled and tapped hole for the pressure relief. I've already squared up the stock that will become the upper chamber. I center drilled it, followed that with a bit of a pilot hole, maybe about an inch deep. Just enough to get in a larger drill bit to get me a starter hole so I can start to bore this end out. So the features that go into the bottom part of the upper chamber are probably the trickiest of this whole build. So try not to screw them up, would you? I'll have to bore it open to size so I can cut the internal threads that receive the boiler. There are also a couple of features that locate the filter up at the top of those threads and a couple of features for the seal. The seal is undercut under the threads and it locks the filter in place. The filter actually goes this way, I think. All of this needs to happen at the correct depth so that when you screw the two parts together you get adequate compression on the seal and the two halves, the aluminum parts, don't bottom out. The next big step here would be to rough out the top, sort of the coffee pot where the coffee collects. Now if you recall, that's got sort of a protrusion in the center, like a center column that the coffee percolates out of. I don't have the right tools to be able to cut out sort of that annular groove on the lathe. I don't even know if such tools exist, I've got to go pretty deep. So my plan is to mill it out with the rotary table and then come back and just clean it up with a boring bar. Before I can do that, I want to build up some material for a spout and put on some type of attachment for a handle. Let's head over to the router. Let's clear a path and get to the scene. Come on, man. My garage ain't that cluttered.
There is my handle. There is my spout. It's much too hot to touch. It must be a million degrees. If you think it looks bad now, you just wait till we're finished. I'm going to set up the mill while I let this cool down and then we'll come back and talk about what happened here. So I hope what you just saw me do with all the welding and stuff is relatively self-explanatory. I put the handle on and then started to build up this spout. I used a small piece of, I think this is bronze, as a dam to help build that up. The aluminum weld won't stick to the bronze so it gives me sort of a wall to work up against. I then just flipped it up, took the bronze away, and built up any places that looked a little bit low. Hopefully after machining we don't have any low spots. I have the rotary table with the three-jaw chuck mounted on the mill. It's centered and zeroed on the DRO. And my stack up here is a little bit tight. I can't get in here with a long enough end mill to be able to get all the way to the bottom, so I'm going to have to do this in a couple of steps. Get down as far as I can with a shorter end mill and then swap those out until I reach the depth that I need. Again, the whole point of this is to hollow this top chamber out and still leave a center column for that coffee to come up through. So that was about as far as I could get down with this end mill. That's about an inch deep and I widened it up a bit. Before I go any further, while I still have some wall thickness and heft to this part, I'm going to try to clean up this spout as best I can. I mean, in the end this will need some handwork with files and some paper probably, but I'd like to get it consistent as possible right off the mill. You know, I think Demosthenes put it best when he said, you cannot have a proud and chivalrous spirit if your conduct is mean and paltry. For whatever a man's actions are, such must be his spirit. So I'm going to finish this in the lathe. All right, so that cleaned up pretty good. Part's gotten a lot lighter. I basically just cleaned up the ID, took it to wall thickness, and cleaned up sort of the center column. And while I was here, I just cut a lap joint at the top that the lid will be able to key into. Let's head back over to the mill. I went in with a ball end mill and roughed out the inside of that spout. That's going to need some handwork with a file to sort of blend all those surfaces in, but it blew out the bulk of the material. I then came in and put in a couple of undercuts at the top of the center column where the coffee comes out. There's two 180 degrees apart, and I essentially just went in and undercut that to give me a flat for a starter hole and drilled that through. Ideally, these would probably be undercuts so that the coffee sort of jets out down into the chamber instead of up at you if you have the lid open. But I'm hoping the edge of that undercut is 
deep enough where the coffee might hit that and sort of at least come out horizontally, if not spray straight down. To be honest, I'm not too worried about it. Now, the size of that hole was also quite arbitrary. It looked about right. I think it's about an eighth of an inch, three millimeters or so. I'm sure that the size of that hole has some effect on the pressure balance and consequently how the espresso tastes, because of course it would. Nothing quite says professional like filming your own screen. So I've got a blank for a lid modeled in SolidWorks. It's really just the, the major contour with features to attach the lid, a little something to cover the spout, and primarily the lap joint that goes around the bottom. Maybe a cross section gives you a better sense of what this part will look like. Now I have a piece of aluminum just from the scrap bin that I think I can get this lid out of. And you know, it's just sort of cut off from whatever it used to be. It's not square, it's got some holes in it, but it sort of would fit here in the middle. And the one thing I really like about these CAM programs, at least HSM Express and Fusion, those are really the only two I, I have available to me, is that you can, you know, model the stock directly into the CAD file. And that lets me place the lid so I avoid any defects in the raw stock. So you're looking at more or less all of the parts here, three parts. I made some changes to the lid after it came off the CNC machine. It, the part just felt a little heavy, so I opened up the internal diameter, thinned it up a bit at the top. I decided I didn't like the spout cover, so I took that off, and I think you just saw me mill a fillet, like a radius, on this top edge. You know, I'm not quite sure what this reminds me of. Like early 80s, maybe? Or is it older than that? The only thing I'm missing now is this little pressure relief. 
I've sort of waited to the end because I wanted to see how these two screwed together, where sort of they stopped when they were completely bottomed out. I'm going to put this, I don't know, about there. I'm just thinking if that really were to blow, it would happen while it's on the fire and hot steam's coming out, and so you probably don't want it pointing back towards the handle, or I'm completely overthinking it. In terms of the height, I want to keep this above the water line on the inside. The water line happens about a quarter inch or so below that mark there. If this thing were to blow, I assume it's better to have water vapor coming out of there instead of a stream of boiling hot water. So I'm going to use just this starter tap. This is out of a two-piece set. There's sort of the start and the finish tap. And I'm going to try not to go to fully developed threads. Because this needs to seal, I'm hoping the I can use the valve to sort of help form the final threads. I say that in air quotes, so I'm not sure if it's going to pull that off or not. So it went down just until the first few fully developed threads were in the material. The last couple of turns I don't think are fully, fully formed. All right, so hopefully that doesn't leak. So I've got some water in there just shy of the pressure relief valve. Just gonna add some coffee. Now don't freak out, I've already washed this thing like five times and have run hot water through it. You know, truth be told, I'm not even that big of an espresso fan. I mean, I certainly enjoy a good espresso. But you know what? This channel's got a reputation to maintain. So I don't see any aluminum chips in there. That's probably a good first sign. And it tastes like espresso with just a hint of WD-40.